So the, for those of you unfamiliar with what IBS is, it's a, a, a way to get idiots and retards to scream at each other. Uh, that's been the draw for me. I think that's been the draw for most people compared it to things like Springer because that's what I like. I like watching people get angry and scream at one another. That's part of the fun of it. But I'll be damned if the people hosting these fucking streams find it difficult just to maintain that as a status quo. Easiest job in the world. Set up a set up a stream and let two idiots scream at each other. But we've got to have betrayals and uh, intrigue and backstabbing and discord groups that uh, completely completely fuck up the community. So I'm going to go over that. I'm getting a lot of questions on what uh, my opinion on these people are uh, and my opinion on the events that have been happening. So let's start it off with uh, Baked Alaska, because now that's fucking based. Who doesn't love Baked Alaska? A guy that uh, changes his skin more than a fucking snake. He just sheds it off and becomes something new. One day he's working at BuzzFeed. The next day he's a based megapede. Then he's a race realist. Then he's a rapper. And then he's praying to Jesus on streams. All the while having cocaine whores in his house uh, for his amazing streams. And then turning on his chat, which I had a bit of an issue with. I, I don't like that. I don't like the idea of drawing people in. Saying, you're the audience that I like. You're the kind of people that I can relate to. And then turning around and shitting on them and calling them toxic. And telling them to behave. Who uses that fucking word, by the way? I've heard a few people try to uh, justify it. To rationalize it. But every time I hear the word toxicity. Every time I hear the word uh, toxic, I can only think of a few things. I think of fucking Tumblr. I think of RSRS. And I think of Overwatch. And none of those fucking things are good. I don't want to be compared to that shit. I don't know why he would. But he's got to get rid of those toxic people in the uh, in the chat section of his live streams because they need to go away. Sure, they've financially supported him. Sure, they've shown up at 2 in the fucking morning to watch this retard fuck up a very simple format. But they need to go because he's an influencer now. By the way, if you use the term influencer in your day-to-day -day life, consider drinking bleach. Do us all a fucking favor. Maybe take a dive off a building. I don't know. It's a suggestion. Not saying you should do it, just suggesting it as a possibility for advancing your fucking career. But uh, yeah, he moved out to Hollywood. He moved out to L.A. He went over to the uh, to the California, California. Let people start influencing him into becoming a standard influencer. And everything went to shit. I went on stream with this guy a few times. Talked about different matchups that would have been entertaining. And uh, thought everything was great, but boy was I retarded. I made, a, I made a bit of a mistake with Baked Alaska and had a little bit of a falling out with him. Now, people got on my case and said I was a little too harsh on Baked. He's a good boy. He didn't do nothing until the very next day when he accused another guy of being a cokehead and said things to the effect of, you wanted me to find you cocaine, I have the text messages. And <laughs> to which the other guy replied, would you want me to talk about uh, how you were offering to get it for me? So that's, that's brilliant. And then they kept dropping names, because that's what everybody in L.A. wants to hear. You got these two goofy fucks arguing on live stream with one another about cocaine deals. And then they're dropping your name left and right like it's a fucking bomb. Ice Poseidon, Ice Poseidon, Ice Poseidon. If I was Ice Poseidon, I wouldn't let Andy Worski or Baked Alaska anywhere near my fucking house. Talk about trouble. What are you doing? But the big news for those of you that follow this shit, would be the split between Andy Worski and J.F. Jean-Francois Garapier, however you pronounce it. I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a Frenchman. I couldn't tell you how to say that properly. But you've got to consider, you've got the simplest fucking job on the face of the goddamn earth. You literally sit on your ass for three hours and let people give you money. They just, they throw money at you. You sit on your ass and let other people talk and you get paid for it. And yet somehow they couldn't make that work. The relationship just couldn't work out. They split apart. They went their, their separate ways. Now you've got people running around saying Team JF and Team Andy. <laughs> they split their audience. They fucked their bottom line. They wanted to treat it like a, a, a business, like it's something they could make money over and completely drop the fucking ball. Ridiculous shit. Acting like teenage girls. Airing it all out in public. Ridiculous. Now, uh, this is a follow-up, because JF had said something to the effect of uh, Andy is low IQ, which started a fight uh, a while ago. I'd given Andy two different pieces of advice on two different days. 
and he seemingly picked the one that he felt most uh, comfortable with. The first day I said, it's your show, run it how you want. If you're upset with JF, get rid of JF. The second day I said, you guys should work it out. You've got, you've got something going there. And then you wait, you give him the two different opinions and you see what he goes with. And he chose to stick with JF. But a month down the road, here we are back at arguing because uh, JF had kicked somebody from the stream. He'd kicked the Ralph retort during his stream and he wasn't uh, too thrilled about that. Got into a bit of a fight. Later on, they have a stream with Chris Cantwell. Uh, they take the stream down. JF does a stream talking about how Andy defamed him somehow. And uh, it went to shit after that. They, they broke up live on air. <laughs> it's, so, it's so ridiculous. I, I got into this shit. The, the reason I like it so much, and I think the reason it uh, appeals to so many people, is we like watching people argue. And so that that's my main take on it. That's why I've been interested in this. I just want to watch people scream at each other. So, it, you know, it's all copacetic. It's been great for me. The only problem is when all the hosts and the shows start to fight with one another, uh, it kind of fucking torpedoes the whole idea. Now, JF's gone to do uh, to do high intellectual streams, and Andy's going to go do uh, dude uh, Lamal weed streams, and they've kind of they've kind of broken apart. But before I continue with my story here, because we're going to get to the good bits. Let's see what chat has to say. Chat, I, I don't know. Greatest anime betrayals from Jake. Don't know how you'd... Uh... <laughs> well, there's so many animal... Animal? Uh, filthy animals. Anime betrayals. There's so many goddamn anime betrayals going on, it's hard to keep fucking track. Uh, there is a bit of a delay, too. So if you hear a moment of silence, that's not me praying for Baked Alaska's career. That's me waiting for the fucking chat to catch up. Uh, I don't know, chat. Why don't you why don't you throw out a one if you're a team JF, and throw out a two if you're a team Andy, and then we'll talk about their metrics and what I think is going to happen to their channels. So one for JF, two for Andy. We got about what is it, 8,300 people watching? Give us a good idea of what we're looking at. Oh, I've got to turn live chat on. See, I'm not even taking my own fucking advice. What a cunt I am. Switch that over. Somebody said put it into slow mode. Fuck that now. Fast mode's where it's at. You gotta be quick. You gotta read this shit as it scrolls by at a million miles an hour. I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of threes. I don't blame anybody. And I'm also seeing a lot of ones. But it's uh there there are twos in there as well. A couple of sixes and zeros, because fuck it, I won't do what you tell me to do. A fourteen eighty eight from Sam Hyde, no less. Thank you, Sam. I don't know if Hitler's gonna come stream with any of these people anytime soon. He'd probably He'd probably gas them all, to be honest with you. But it would make for an energy. He'd probably make a lot of super chats that night. Uh, a couple of people saying, fuck them both. Gotta go fast. Now, when you're looking at the metrics between their, their little breakup, their loss of an emotional connection, Andy's, Andy's taking a, a pretty sizable hit. I think he's down about 2,500 to 3,000 subs. Uh, JF Gierpe is up. I'd say roughly 1,500 subs. So there's been a definite shift over to his platform. Now, JF, because he is the world's most French Frenchman, has found a way to parlay this breakup into bringing chicks on stream and getting paid for it, which I have to say is somewhat fucking admirable. You have to give him credit for that. I want you to imagine yourself in a bar hitting on chicks, and every time you go up to some, uh, some woman and you're like, uh, hey, yo, baby, you want some fuck? Some dude walks up behind you, slips $100 in your pocket, and says, Nice job. fourteen eighty eight. Slay that pussy. <laughs> that is what JF is doing. He had uh, Yukas on, and then he had... Um, I don't even know who the second lady was, but he had a couple of women on. Made some good money from doing it. So it, it, he seems to be stable. I don't know what the future holds for Andy's stream. People said that they think they're different personalities. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, Andy is a... Uh, as Jeff has put it, his low IQ, he's a little slow. You'd think it'd be a match made in heaven, a fucking uh, alignment of the stars, because if Andy's slow and a little retarded, that should be JF's type. I'm, you know what I'm saying, chat? You get that? That's a little bit of banter. It's a little bit of banter. But nobody's here to ban me. I can talk all the shit I want, and I can't get kicked off any stream. Isn't that good? Feel free to, feel free to say that in the chat. Nothing's going to happen to you. You can talk all the shit about anybody you like. Then you've got the morning kumite. Which actually has probably been my favorite, if I had to pin it down. I, I do like Tonkasa's morning show. 
if you want to call that XM radio-like, or what they're trying to make it, uh, kind of an Opie and Anthony vibe, uh, it's, it's not bad. But I swear to fucking God, if I hear Viva La Raza one more time, I'm going to shoot failure's ass out of a cannon right over the fucking wall with Mexico. I can't stand it anymore. It's gone beyond funny and cute into I don't want to listen to this shit anymore. I'm going to gouge my fucking eyes out. Why is that, by the way, that every goddamn streamer out there, every time something happens, somebody says something in chat, they get a donation that comes through, Streamlabs pops up, there's a sponsorship, there's a subscriber, you need to hear, now that's fucking based. Viva La Rasa. Can't fucking stand it. I, I don't think I'm the only one on this, by the way. Oh, and then you've got Backyard Blood Sports. God damn, every one of these fucking channels has had issues, and I, I don't understand it. I don't understand how you can fuck up something this simple. Uh, Joakim apparently getting into uh, some shady, shady dealings, allegedly, with uh, Super Hacker Zoom. And uh, breaking off with the Backyard Blood Sports guys because he was doing... He was doing some shenanigans that they didn't appreciate, and so he, he took his leave. He left the he left the platform. And you've got King of Pole fucking inserting himself everywhere. Uh, by the way, to clear the air, because people have asked repeatedly, uh, Brian was uh, never part of Medicare. He's made that claim once before. Never, never a fucking part of that. Uh, we've talked to each other on Skype occasionally. I played a video game with him twice. And uh, we're not best buddies. And also... You know, Paul, if you're listening to this, my name isn't fucking leverage for you to swing about like it's a cudgel. You can't go around everywhere dropping my name and acting like that's going to troll shield you or get you some kind of goodies or something. That's just fucking weird. So stop doing that. I don't think you'll be doing that. You know, to be fair, I don't think you're ever going to do that again after this audio plays. I have a good feeling you're probably going to hate me, but don't blame me. Blame the dude that sent it to me because it's funny shit. And I like funny shit. The audience likes funny shit. See, with blood sports, it's not necessarily that you need to have two people coming in and going at each other. You just need to provide something that's entertaining. You need to give the people what they want, a spectacle. I think uh, Ralph Retort probably had one of the better ones when he had uh, Nick Fuentes and James Alsop on. You don't, even know, you don't even need to know who they are. They were two former business partners. There was a split in the business. There's some bad blood between them. That's all you need to know. Boom, they're going to go at it. And that's another case, too, of people that just can't seem to manage having a business relationship with each other, uh, which is strange because they had a discussion about Syria, and regardless of what your politics are or which way you might swing on that, they really flow well off one another. Uh, there's a good amount of back and forth with them, and that, that shot to shit. That's never going to happen again. I guess, I guess you need some third party, some unbiased third party that has no connection to anybody to run the goddamn business because people trying to do it on their own just doesn't work out. Uh, JF and Andy couldn't work it out. Nick and James couldn't work it out. Joakim and the Backyard Blood Sports people couldn't work it out. Baked Alaska is going schizophrenic in California right now, praying to Jesus. Couldn't work it out. Bringing on some, some cam whore and some other chick who <laughs> who didn't like the cam whore, which I, I don't disagree with. I uh, just, uh, oh... Oh, they want the audio. The people watching want the audio. What could the audio be? I'm going to cock tease you a little bit more here. I'm going to make you earn it. We've got a little bit of talking to do before the show really gets kind of its flow going. You need that first 20 minutes or so of uh, filler to get things going. Luckily, I'm not spamming you with a 30-minute intro block <coughs> kumite, uh, that makes you want to fucking shoot yourself. I'm just going right into it. I'm just jumping straight into it. So let's have a little discussion with the chat. You know, I'm going to throw the chat window up here. Accidentally, it's set on top chat, not live chat, but I will respond to live chat. But then at least people can see what's going on. Let's uh, pop that up there. It's a little it's a little askew, but you'll have to forgive me. Yes, the audio is coming up. The, <laughs> the audio is coming up. I think you're all going to enjoy it quite a bit. So you tell me, chat, what is your, what is your take on the IBS phenomena? which is, again, just retards screaming at each other. It's the easiest fucking thing in the world to do. And when you think you get a golden goose like that, I mean, a lot of these people that are kind of involved in it do see it as a profession. They see it as a business, but then they don't treat it like it, which is fucking weird to me, I guess, if you're, if you're making so much money. I mean, JF and Andy were making a killing doing this shit. You just leave the fucking super chat button open, and then you talk, and then you let people yell at each other. 
but they, they couldn't seem to manage that, and I just don't fucking get it. It's dumb to me. It's dead. I'm seeing a lot of it's dead, it's full of faggots. Chat is, uh, is not pulling any punches. They're being very upfront about this. I can't say that I disagree, chat. It has kind of become gay and boring. Uh, I don't know if they can recover from it. I, I think maybe the only one walking away with a semblance of an audience after this is probably, probably Kumite, uh, because they weren't really front and center with it. I, I don't know. I mean, that is if Tonka stops challenging everybody to a fucking physical fight. Like, I get it, Baked opened the challenge to you, but Tonka, man, you got you got to stop it. You need to cool it with that shit. You can't be saying to every person you get into a disagreement with that you want to fight them in real life. I don't, I don't know what you're doing. Oh, and, you know, and another thing, too, I should probably bring up. After Andy and JF split up, if you go and watch that stream, if you can find it or if you have any interest in looking at it, Look at the people that immediately circled in like fucking vultures picking at a carcass. You had Quarter Pounder, a.k.a. The Quartering, uh, celebrating that JF was being exiled. The, one of the first people to jump in the hangout after JF left was Short Fat Otaku, somebody that did a video about how shit IBS is, how terrible JF is. They're, they're celebrating that. They, they love it. And, uh... <laughs> what in the fuck, Andy? Come on. <laughs> Too many fights in a row? Yeah, I agree. Too many fights in a row. Pineapple? I don't know why you'd have a safe word with people. Fucking dumb, if you ask me. If you need to have a safe word with another man, maybe you should, you know, turn in your pair of testicles. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. Okay, everybody's... You know what? I, I, I'll be a good boy. Because people like things brief. I'm not here to keep you for three and a half hours or four hours. Viva la raza. Oh, fuck out of here.